if how you do anything's how you do everything, then really you just need to pick an area that makes you uncomfortable and start moving in that direction. It may seem insurmountable, but like I said, a thousand mile journey starts with one step, one step. Welcome to the Sales Wolf Podcast. This is Joseph Caldwell, and I am your Sales Wolf host today. Uh, <laughs> I could possibly have just blown the eardrums out of the lady over here recording. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you just hit the volume button when I did that, didn't you? Sorry. Uh, we tested it at this volume, and then I scream and howl into the into the microphone. To Today, we're going to be talking about um, fear, fear, and the brain, and what our brains are hardwired to do, which is keep us safe, um, and how that relates to our world now, okay? Because today, as I talk about that, um, be thinking about where you are in each area of your life, and you make these goals to do something better, something greater, but then you never accomplish it. So why are you hardwired to keep you from going any further? And and, and I think that they call it all types of stuff, fear of success, fear of failure, fear of the unknown, fear of everything, but it's just fear. It's fear of not being safe, okay? Because our brains are hardwired to keep us safe. If your brain is hardwired to keep you safe, then anything outside of that is not safe. And today I'll use the analogy of a, of a dark room you've never been in. I open the door, it's pitch black, I push you into a dark room and tell you to run across it. It will, it will heighten every fear in you, the safety, you won't feel safe. And But what would be the best way to get to the other side of that room? Probably inch by inch. So we'll talk about micro goals, we'll talk about um, all types of stuff when it comes to that fear. We talk about different fears, but really our ultimate fear is not being safe is dying. And I've been studying this lately, this fear, this fear of success. The fear of success, I believe, is because someone hasn't been whatever their version of success is. And so if they've never been it, then it's an unknown. And if I were to open up a door of a place you've never been and it's pitch black, can't see nothing and tell you just to walk straight in it, what is that? It's unknown, right? Is it safe? You don't know, but what will your brain, what will your brain tell you if you just start walking right in? You pitch black, can't even see your hand, you're just walking. What will your brain tell you? Unsafe. Unsafe. Leave. Get light. Look not safe. It, you're going to die is how your brain treats that. And so I don't know that it's necessarily a fear of success, but but it's more a fear of the unknown. It's a fear of the unknown. It's a not safe thing. So your brain responds to that by keeping you away from it, right? Keeping you in the known. And if the known is your version of not successful or, or chaos or whatever it is, whatever's the known for you. It's like you'd rather deal with the devil, you know, than the devil you don't, or you you know what I'm saying? Like it's, 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 um, it's a fear. It's a, it's an, it is the way our brains are wired to keep us safe. So you have to constantly push into the unknown. Unknown is not comfortable, Unknown triggers that heightened awareness in your brain, that not safe. And this is how everybody is. This is how every single human is. And that's why, that's why, um, that's why most people don't ever change. That's what, you know, it's funny. I told somebody the other day that most of what I do as, you know, the CEO of change and whatever, I talk about change and this and change and that and changing yourself and changing your environment and changing your company and changing your finances, changing your health and changing your relationships. We talk about change, but most people never do it. Why do most people never do it? Because they're comfortable. They're, it's safe where they are. Now, you may say, you may say, why does the 
abused person return to the abusing relationship. It's safe. I know that sounds crazy, but it's not safe, right? To you and I, we would go, that's not safe. But to them, that's what they know. So they return to it over and over and over again because outside of that is an unknown. If that's what they've always been in, outside of that is an unknown. And they have trapped themselves in what their brain knows to be safe. They're not, they don't die in it, even though it could be pretty terrible. They don't die, so their brain keeps them there because outside that's unknown, and in the unknown you die. And so... Um, and we could take it and we could look at, we could look at more, like every kind of situation possible. Um, and our brains are hardwired to keep us safe, keep us safe and procreate. That's like the two driving biological forces. We'll leave the procreate one for another webinar. Maybe Tyler can, can touch on that. Um, but, uh, or another podcast, but, uh, but this, this, this thing with everybody dealing with their fears, um, if how you do anything's how you do everything, then really you just need to pick an area that makes you uncomfortable and start moving in that direction. It may seem insurmountable, but like I said, a thousand mile journey starts with one step, one step. And you know, you have all these, all these people out there now talking about, um, micro micro steps and micro goals and micro actions and that's what they're playing into there because to get your brain to know like if you're getting ready to walk into into that dark room right if you're getting ready if if i opened up the door it's pitch black and you have to go in that room until there's another wall can't see anything do you just roll right through just you have no idea what's there you don't know the obstacles you don't know you don't know if you can trip over something you don't know if there's something sharp you know if something's gonna hit you in the face you don't know if there's somebody in there you don't know anything you cannot see anything you don't know where the wall is it could be five feet in ten feet in it could be 500 feet in and you just have to walk there do you just stroll in there just walking like this no and so that's what what everybody that's talking about those micro actions micro goals what would be the safest thing probably get down on your hands and knees an inch right inch and so, and you would be in a heightened state of discomfort, but it wouldn't be as bad as if you just started rolling right through the room, couldn't see anything. So, um, they're playing into that, but it's really simple. And, and, and now that I've, now that I'm starting to understand it, that, that to do anything, it's a, it's a, it's a little step. It's a little step. Do micro steps there. It's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah, it's going to it's going to alert your brain to try to keep you safe, try to keep you in the comfort zone, in the box, in the in the whatever perception that you have that has been safe up until that point. And and if your goals and dreams are on the outside of that, then you have to take action steps that way. So 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 you take little steps in that direction. So one of the things that's that is um you know, really not comfortable for me. Um, and believe it or not, I know this sounds crazy because I do a lot of this, but it's social settings. And so I, I will show up late. I will show up late to social settings on purpose because everybody's already mingling around or, or everything's already moving. I don't want to, I don't want somebody to walk in and all eyes be on me. You know, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. And so I will get there a little bit late and, and, and I've noticed myself doing that. So now my micro step to overcome that fear, and I don't even know why it's there, but the micro step to overcome that, for some reason it triggers my brain that that's not a safe environment. For some reason. I don't know what it is. But every single social setting that I'm going to be in, I'm going to get there early. I'm going to be one of the first ones there. And, and plan ahead to just arrive early so that my brain will start going, see, you're not going to die. This isn't. You're not, it's, this is okay. And you start retraining because your, your brain can be retrained. Um, and, and the more micro steps you take in any, any direction in your life, it's, if it's your health, I mean, you, you've probably read some of the stuff or seen some of the stuff or heard a podcast with, with somebody that's grossly overweight on all kinds of medications and they want to change their health. They want to change it. And so the micro step they do is they buy a pair of tennis shoes. Then they start taking the tennis shoes and taking them downstairs each morning at the same time and putting them by the door. That's all they do. Just put the tennis shoes by the door. Then they start putting workout pants and, and shirt and tennis shoes by the front door. 
and and micro step it, micro step it over time. So your brain sees, well, I'm still safe. Well, I'm still safe. I'm still safe. I'm still safe. Then then they'll put the stuff on and just wear it around in the morning time when they would be working out and they just wear it around their house. Then they get ready for work and go. Do that over and over and over and over. Then they then they actually go get in the car and drive to the gym each morning. Go drive to the gym, join a gym, drive to it, sit in the parking lot, and drive home. That's a micro step. So you're still safe. You're telling your brain you're still safe. And it may sound crazy, but this is how great stuff is accomplished. You you take that person and over two years, they start driving to the gym. They start they start going into the gym. They start sitting in the sauna for ten minutes and and then they walk around and 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 use some of the machines and go home. And they start doing that. Then they get a personal trainer. Then they start learning about this stuff. Then they start changing their diet. Then they start, and two years later, they don't even look like the same person. They're off their medications. They're, they're. Now, most people overestimate what they can accomplish in a month. They grossly underestimate what they can accomplish in one, two, three, four, five years. And it's those micro steps. It's micro steps. It's micro steps. And you know what that's called? Consistency? Yeah, but that's persistency. And I was talking to a mentor of mine the other day and, and we were talking about business and I was like, it's, it's nothing special. And he said, yes, but nothing can replace persistency. Nothing can replace the over and over and over and over and just a little further and a little further. It's not, but most people think, you know, I'm going to wake up today and I am going to go join a gym, go join a yoga studio, throw out all the bad food in my house, put all good food in my house, change everything about my life today. And I would venture to say that if you yo-yo like that, then, then you're going to always flip back to, to the baseline of security, right? Um, and, and that's where you are at this moment. So anyway, I hope some of this help somebody. I have enjoyed um, being with you today. The Sales Wolf Podcast. I hope this helped you. Hope it helped. uh, Hope it helped you inch along where you where you want to go. So I'm Joseph Caldwell, your host for the day. Sales Wolf Podcast. I am a sales wolf. Ow!